afternoon and welcome to this event to present the uh, synthesis report on families, family policy and the sustainable development goals. My name is Alberto Padova. I'm the chief of the social inclusion and participation branch in the Department of Economic and Social Affairs. And I'm delighted to uh, moderate this event uh, to launch this uh, very important study. Uh, the study looks at the role and contribution of families and family policies in the realization of the 2030 Agenda and specific sustainable development goals. I think that it's, uh, there's a growing consensus about the fundamental role that families and family policies have in the realization of the Agenda. But at the same time, I think that uh, sometimes this important contribution is overlooked. What we really hope is to bring to lawmakers, academics, the private sector and civil society representatives with this tool and the full publication of the outcomes, some tools that will allow them to discern what really works to help families in their social role without trying to replace them, which has been a common mistake, or to leave them alone when they deserve that help. We all see today how some changes society has experimented in the last decades. The massive incorporation of women to the labor market and more generally the wider range of personal choices in life. And how they have brought very positive consequences like less inequality and more freedom. But at the same time, there are some side effects that families have to bear with as the greater need for care to you. Some children, sick, older people, and other vulnerable groups or groups in situation of vulnerability, <laughs> that is, uh, are left behind precisely because there is freedom. And only strong families are able to cover their needs because that is precisely what having a family is about. Only strong families can make societies be really inclusive. Only strong families can make it possible to ensure that no one is left behind, which is precisely the main aim of the 2030 Agenda. So, um, something you'll hear, and I'm sure you'll hear it for the next, next 12 years or so uh, in family circles, is that across the SDGs, if you look at the goals and targets, family is only mentioned a few times. Uh, it, it's rarely mentioned, family is rarely mentioned in those goals. And uh, uh, dis reasons why this may be the case could be to do with um, the politicization of uh, family, um, but it all co also could be to do with what I'm talking about when I say moving from where we want to go to how we get there. Uh, we've taken a view of the family in our report as a conduit to social change. Uh, the family is the fundamental unit of society, uh, it's our smallest social unit. Uh, it's the foundation on which we build everything else, all of our social interaction. Um, and in, in being that, it is the place where we intervene mostly when we want to intervene for children and other dependents, when, when we want to support labor market access, when we want to encourage health, when we want to lower violence, and so on. You know, good family policies um, are, let's say, social policies with a bonus. They provide uh, better human rights protection for members of the family, gender equality, better outcomes in terms of health, education, and so on and so forth, what you have already mentioned. And they also have a spillover impact on, on the extended family. And so um, I believe, and I think that a um, lot of the other member states share my belief that moving the conversation forward on this issue is, is very important. And in that respect, research such as you undertaken is key in, in enabling us to, to build on evidence that is out there. And uh, I have seen a progress um, on this topic um, during the past year at the UN. So we now really try to, to, to speak about concrete action to be taken. And uh, you can see them um, in UN documents and resolutions, how they feed into the intergovernmental discussion, which is a, which is a huge asset. And they had uh, the, the privilege of observing from, from the side uh, the process of it and be part of some of the conversations. And, and it really is a, a fantastic study. 
and a brave study because of what the representative from from Hungary was saying is a conversation that needs to be to be had. So so it's a fantastic first step. Each of the studies could be a whole publication in itself and much more. So I hope this is really only the the beginning of, of bringing practical ideas. Uh, and, and bring in the how to achieve this very complicated and colorful conversation that are, that are the SDGs. And I think, uh, so SOS Children's Villages uh, works with uh, children without parental care and at risk of losing it. So with families at risk of breaking down. So our perspective into the family is from, and it's what I want to bring here today, is say the same just from the other side of the coin, is, um, uh, not to prove how beneficial investing in family policies can be, but how negative the consequences are if these family policies are not put in place and in family, if families are not supported. And that is negative for the child and thus for the society as, as a whole. Have a look at this report. It's really uh, worth not only reading but also using in, in our work. And uh, so just don't put it in, uh, on the bookshelf but use it in your daily work and make sure that uh, the results and the recommendations coming out of all the studies are used in uh, pushing uh, better family, family policies uh, to the, for the realization of the 2030 agenda. Thank you all.